Good morning. We are in uh, Deer Lake in Newfoundland this morning and it is gorgeous out. So we figured it's a good time to finally fix our brakes for real. Um, we met up with, uh, with our friend Mark yesterday and his, and his dog Jackson, um, who we met uh, in Ottawa at a Walmart, um, I don't know, a couple months ago, I guess. And, uh, and so he's been doing a similar trip to us, uh, and so we finally met up on the road. We had a, a great night last night, had a, had a good conversation, a couple drinks, and uh, now we're up bright and early, and we're gonna repair our brakes because he picked up the brake parts for us in Corner Brook, which is about a half hour uh, south of here. Um, we were gonna head there to the Canadian Tire to pick them up ourselves, but since he was already there, he picked them up for us, and so we don't have to uh, head out of our way, which is fantastic. So um, he, him and uh, Jackson are just over at the, the restaurant at the, the truck stop that we're at. They're gonna have some breakfast, we're gonna fix our brakes, and then after that, um, maybe uh, maybe he'll let us show you his van as well, because he's got a, a very different setup than we do, um, and it's worth seeing, I think. So by now, we have pulled this uh, wheel off I don't even know how many times we've pulled wheels off this van on this trip uh, because of our uh, a couple of blown tires and now the brake problem a couple times. Um, so it's become something of a system. We've got the hubcap off. Loosen these guys. They're loosened off a little bit, and we jack it up. There we go. It just has to be off the ground far enough for the wheel to go to turn, basically. And then uh, we can release the rest of the wheel. Find the hubcap makes it pretty good for all the lug nuts so you don't lose them. And we just pull off the wheel. Now, we'll inspect the job I did before with the wire. So here is our brake caliper. Uh, this is what holds the brake pads on the rotor, this part. Uh, so whenever you press the brake, this squeezes in these two pads onto the rotor and it stops the wheel. The problem was that there is a clip down here you can see that is supposed to be up here as well, but it unfortunately is missing. Uh, whenever we were on the Trans-Labrador Highway, the really, really bumpy road, it vibrated out the bolt that holds the clip in, and so unfortunately it flew off, which meant that the caliper could rock up and down and eventually it rocked up so much that it actually got jammed inside the wheel well and locked it up, kind of like your brakes being locked up. So basically what I've done to fix it here is I've got a bunch of this sturdy wire uh, wrapped around this section and then wrapped around a bolt here so it's, it's just locking it down in place so it can't move. But since we've been driving on this now for a couple of days, it, uh, it's stretched a bit so you can see that it's got a bit of bit of movement to it which is starting to make a big rattle and and it's definitely not the ideal solution so we've been trying to find parts for this thing for uh, several days now and every place we go uh, they don't have it um, until we got to the corner brook Canadian tire where mark picked it up for us they had it luckily in stock it was only 17 bucks and now we're gonna put it on so before we put that part on since we don't have a jack stand or an axle stand I'm just gonna take the wheel that we just pulled off Shove it underneath. There we go. This is absolutely not a replacement for an axle stand, but if some if for some reason the jack were to tip over right now, if the van fell, it at least will land on this instead of landing directly on the pavement on top of your brake rotor. And if my hand or something happens to be under there, it'll hopefully save it as well. So now I'm just gonna take wire cutters and I'm just gonna cut off that wire that I had put on. There we are. 
for this last piece, I'll take out that bolt first. There we go. Now, this might look a little strange. This is basically a, uh, a bolt with a nut on it, and then there were also these two washers. The reason why we had all that on there is because we didn't have a bolt that fit this, uh, this thread and at the proper length, and we didn't have a hacksaw. <laughs> so instead, we picked up a bolt that uh, fit the right threading, and then we just put in some spacers with these, uh, with the nut and the two washers, uh, so that the actual depth of the, of the screw portion of the bolt actually fit in properly. Uh, this we got at a, um, a local parts shop, uh, right after we got on to uh, Newfoundland the other day and uh, super friendly people there as usual um, so much uh, to the point that the uh, owner of the parts store let us use the parking lot to jack up the van and do put this little temporary fix on um, and he, he came out a few times to make sure that we were okay he uh, gave me some hand cleaner and rags afterwards to clean up and he even offered me a beer that he was keeping chilled in the pond out back which was pretty awesome so um, as always, very friendly people here, always willing to help. Now here is the part that Mark picked up for us in Cornerbrook. We've been having such a hard time finding. This will actually do uh, both uh, front brakes and we only needed to do half of one of the brakes. So we're not going to need most of this, but There we go. So this is all we need right here. And this stuff, we're gonna keep around just in case. So basically on here we've got three parts, a bolt that holds the whole thing in. Then we've got this guy, which is the clip that actually holds the caliper on. And this, which I believe is the anti-vibration clip. And so between the three of them, it holds our brakes together, stops them from vib vibrating and making noise, and uh, puts us back on the road a little bit. So to put them on, you literally just line them up with the hole, making sure that they overlap your caliper, and then put the, the bolt in. So there we go, there's finger tight. And now I just use my ratchet to make it fully tight. There we go. So now she's fixed. And probably what the problem was before is the vibration made that bolt actually come out, which means it probably wasn't tightened up quite enough last time that the brakes were done, which uh, was done by me. <laughs> so my fault, most likely. Well, that's it. Now we're just gonna pop the wheel back on, lower the jack, and we're done. Now basically same process as before, just in reverse. We put all the lug nuts on finger tight, or as tight as we can get them. But because the wheel still spins while it's up in the air, you can't get them too tight. So then we'll lower the jack and we'll tighten it uh, the rest of the way on the ground. This is the jack we use to jack up the van. It is by no means ideal. We should have a proper axle jack um, that actually has a little cup here that, that cups the axle to lift it up. Um, but this is a really old jack that is super reliable and uh, it's the proper weight for our van and it's what we had. And thank goodness, because we've had to use it a lot. 
Um, but because it's uh, it's got a small base on it, it rocks a little bit, it's a good idea to put it on a piece of two by six if you can, so that that way it's a little bit more solid. We're on pavement right now, but whenever we were on a gravel road a couple days ago, uh, this would have been a pretty big, pretty big risk if we didn't have the two by six underneath it just to stabilize it a little bit. So now that it's on the ground, the wheel doesn't turn anymore, and so we can tighten these up the rest of the way. So whenever we tighten up these lug nuts, you don't want to go from one to the next to the next to the next. Um, it's good if, if you have a five volt pattern, then you do sort of like a star shape where you'd go from one, then across to the next one, and then across to the next one, and so on. With an eight volt pattern like ours, it's a little bit harder to keep track of that. So I tend to just skip one as I go. One here, then skip one, then skip one, skip one. Once those are tight, then I go back and do the ones in between. So here and then skip. Etc. The reason why you do that is because as you tighten up one here, it pulls the wheel in, which then makes the next one looser because it pulls it further away from the lug nut. If you were to just keep going from one to the other, then it's, the wheel has a harder time pulling in and straightening out. It's going to take you a lot longer, and there's less guarantee that you've got them all nice and tight. Um, as soon as the wheel starts to move, it might reshift, and then one of them that you thought was tight might become loose again. So if you go from one side to the next to the next, or, or at least skip one in between in this case, then uh, it pulls the whole wheel in a lot more snugly and makes sure that all of them are nice and tight. And that's it. Now we just pop the hubcap back on. There we go, and we're done. Brakes are fixed, finally, for real. So now we'll just clean up the mess, and then we'll head inside to the truck stop, get cleaned up a little bit because I'm filthy again, and uh, we'll check on uh, Mark to see if uh, him and Jackson are done their breakfast and maybe we can get a tour of their van.